Um, hello, Akon. So welcome to the show. It's a true honor to have you on the show. So uh, just give you a little bit of background. I can probably count the number of conferences I attended. Oh, not conferences. Um, um, sorry, let, let me just restart it there for, for a second. Uh, yeah. So um, Akon, uh, welcome, to the, welcome to the Binance Conference. And thank you so much for showing, uh, for joining. And uh, it's a true pleasure. I can't really express. I'm a little bit, actually, I'm a little bit nervous because um, I can't really express how excited I am. Um, you can probably get a feel of that already. So um, just to give you an idea, um, I can probably count the number of concerts I went to with, uh, with a single hand in my life, like real life concerts. I I've been to yours uh, about 10 years ago in Shanghai. So I think you were, you were going to Beijing first and then you came to Shanghai. Right. <laughs> and uh, it was a great concert. So, uh, and it's just a true honor to be talking to you right now. So uh, I feel like a fanboy. Thank you, Thank um, you man. Yeah, so I think uh, Akon with, uh, doesn't need a lot of introductions. And also with us on the panel is um, uh, John, Car uh, John Carras, um, who is the president and co-founder of Acoin. So, um, so we'll ha just have a very casual chat, um, a few random questions here and there, and um, we'll, see how it, we'll see how it goes. So uh, my first question is really, um, um, what got you into crypto, Akon? So what got, you, what got you into crypto? How did you get introduced? What, how did you get in uh, interested, et cetera? Um, well, actually, you know, crypto was always something from a long time ago that was very interesting to me because at the time I had any, no idea what it was. Um, a friend of mine named Ken Rakowski introduced me to Brock Pierce and Brock kind of introduced me to the crypto world. And at the time, you know, I was completely green to what was going on. He walked me through his office, introduced me to his, you know, his, his his team and explained to me exactly what this was and saying this is going to be the future of finance and at the time I was like well you know it's a lot of things that's going to be the future but <laughs> I didn't understand just how much this would be until I actually went back home to Africa and I was exchanging monies and rushing to get to my airport I got on a plane with a pound full of CFA money and landed through France because I was going to connect through France to go back to the U.S. and realize I forgot to exchange my money and when I got to the, you know, the change station over in France, I was like, listen, I want to change this over to euros and the U.S. dollars because I was rushing and didn't get a chance to go to Senegal. And they told me they couldn't change the money over. And I was like, wait, this, this doesn't make sense. How is it that the French made this money, but it's not worth anything here in France? <laughs> and I was like baffled. And I was like, okay, something has to be done about this. And years down the line, the solution of blockchain in Africa with all the transparency that it provided and security. And there's this, you know, it was this huge situation that came to my mind. It was like, man, this is going to be the solution for Africa's currency for sure. And I saw the success of Bitcoin around the world and also the havoc and the commotion it was causing because of the, the biggest disruption, but ultimately because of the fact that it was giving the power back to the people. And I felt at that moment that, you know, crypto is going to be the future for what Africa needs to be. And that was at the moment when I decided I want to start my own cryptocurrency and reached out to John to help me put the team together to actually make it happen. So how, how long between you first learned about Bitcoin and or cryptocurrencies and then you started wanting to do a coin? How long was that a gap? Uh, I think it was about a two and a half, three year gap. Okay. Yeah. So that, it was, you know, yeah, sorry. So it was, it was really more so learning more about it, understanding it and kind of getting the gist of what it really was and the impact that it could really bring to people. And I had to understand exactly what I wanted to well, get into. But at the time, I didn't think I was going to be getting into it. And then when, as the more I learned about it, I started to realize how closer I was going to need that specific tool to be able to do what I want to do in Africa. Right. And um, so uh, 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 what made you want to issue your own coin? Like, what was that trigger? At, at one point, like, somebody, everybody had the trigger says, okay, now I can do my own project and do my own coin. What was that trigger? Right. I think, I think the trigger, uh, majority for it was just seeing how, you know, Africa was just not, was never in a state of a conversation when it came to, you know, what it contributed to the rest of the world. And I always felt like one of the biggest issues of Africa was the mismanagement of the social, the resources there, you know, and also the, the unstableness of the currency there, you know. So when I realized that my goal and plan and life's goal was to really, you know, build Africa and really help to develop the continent in such a big way, I knew finance would be one of the biggest 
you know, uh, uh, nucleuses that will need to be solved is one of the biggest challenges. And I just felt that crypto would be that cure and not only that, but the solution for it. And I think it was around that time when I said, okay, this is gonna definitely be something that I need to go fully in. And in order for Africa to become that, we have to create our own coin, which became the African coin. And that's how it became a coin. It just so happened that it sounded like Akon. And that's when I knew it was the actual, this was meant to be, it's not even a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is very cool. Yeah. So, um, right. yeah, I, I mean, uh, I thought, I'll, I'll ask about Africa in a second, but you, you alluded to something that uh, now you're very famous in the music industry already as a celebrity. Right. And but you are more, uh, you're now working on, uh, on a coin and want to improve the um, world or well, part of Africa at least. So how would you want to be remembered later on? Do you want to be remembered as an awesome singer or uh, an entrepreneur or like, or, um, like say uh, 50, 20, 50 years later, how, how would you want to be remembered? I, you know, I always thought about that, you know, was, with, with the Akon legacy, it was the whole idea was not to be remembered for just singing and dancing. I always felt that music would be what opened the doors to create major impact and big change. So, you know, to, to answer your question, my legacy would be, you know, the one that struck the match to really take Africa's development and Africa's future seriously. And one, you know, that motivated others to come on board and to create Africa to become what it's necessary, I think, was supposed to become. You know, I always felt that, you know, Africa was always the nucleus and the tool to develop every country in the world except its own. And I felt that it was time that Africa utilized its resources to develop itself. Mm. So uh, speak of that then, uh, what, what do you think Acoin would do for um, Africa? Like uh, uh, what's the structure? I read the white paper a little bit and I understand the concept, but can, can you explain or maybe John uh, explain like what does Acoin do for our users? I'll give you two, two, quick, uh, two quick pieces. Uh, the token itself has an internal conversion mechanism that allows users to basically supercharge their prepaid cell minutes, which are a big store of value in Africa. People can go in and out from, uh, from Acoin into prepaid cell minutes, fiat currencies, or some of the major cryptocurrencies. So that's one piece. The more important piece is our DAP store uh, within the Acoin wallet, which is an access point for people to find their way to innovations they can use on a daily basis to learn, earn, spend, and save. And it's those two different parts of the ecosystem to create a vibrant way for people to find their way into blockchain innovation, make their lives better, find entrepreneurial tools and services. Great, great. Right. And, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and as they get into the habit of utilizing the coin, it becomes something that originally manifests as something that's daily necessary and ultimately become the, you know, the, the coin of choice for Africa's trading. Okay, sure. So, Exxon, you also- so CZ, just remember, as, as you know, because you have an exchange in Uganda, Africa is 54 countries, 54 currencies, 54 governments, and we're looking to help provide a tool that unifies and, and helps the people and helps the government to, to have Absolutely. more financial inclusion. Absolutely. So uh, you also have this, um, so Akon, you also have this uh, Malawa Technology City, right? So um, can you describe a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's actually a medical city. Um, you know, fueled by technology. And ultimately the idea of just smart cities around Africa is to also, also a part of the global initiative of, you know, developing Africa and allowing it to continue to leapfrog into the future, you know, utilizing new inventions and new technologies. And the Moali Medical Center is, 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 is exactly that, more from a medical standpoint and taking lead on all the latest, you know, to, um, uh, medical, uh, you could say innovations throughout the continent and utilizing those opportunities to be able to fulfill those basic needs for the locals there. Sure. So, uh, John, can you describe a little bit about what that partnership looks like or how did you achieve it? Uh, sure. What are some of the implications sure, sure, sure. there? Well, right. the, the great thing is that Moale Medical and Technology City is built around a 5,000 bed state of the art hospital and their peripherals. For example, uh, this fall, they'll have an amazing brand new state of the art medical ship on Lake Victoria complete with chopper bays that'll be able to service the entire area around that and bring people to the medical center. But it is full state-of-the-art technology. Some things, uh, I, I hate to say it this way, but they've actually aligned with and brought in some great innovations from Asia, China, and, and, uh, and some of the, the countries, Korea, Japan, et cetera. Uh, so cutting-edge technology, making it accessible to locals. They've also 
attracted an unbelievable core uh, unit of some of the, the best doctors on the planet and made those accessible as a, uh, a draw for people doing everything from just local people needing uh, you know, healthcare to, to even the potential for medical tourism over time. Um, it is an amazing facility that was built with a, a big future vision, and that's exactly what uh, some of which will be applied to Akon City and Senegal and beyond. Mm. Right, and they're currently the leading uh, medical research center in Africa for COVID-19 as we speak today. You know, and the beauty of it is one of the biggest, uh, you know, ideas of it also being one of our partners. They'll be utilizing the ACOIN to, you know, to balance all their, you know, medical bills or, you know, receipts or medications or anything related to that in, within the community itself. So ACOIN will be one of the biggest utilizational tools for them up there. So um, we're, we're, the, uh, we're the digital transaction tool for the city and its residents and the surrounding area. Uh, so all of the folks within the city can do everything from pay utility bills to uh, the, the, uh, all of the employees will be paid uh, using ACOIN. And again, that supercharges prepaid cell minutes. So it, it allows them to, to do lots more than just get a fiat payment or, uh, or otherwise. So. Right, right. So uh, that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty hard deal to sign, right? Uh, you, like based on my experience. Yeah. So how did you go? How did you guys yeah. go about achieving that? I have a really amazing secret trick. If you look at the guy in the red, I just said, "Look, we're going to help create all kinds of visibility and and draw a lot more people to what you're doing. We're really passionate about what you're doing. Let's align." And he smiles, and they sign. It's amazing. <laughs> it's great to have a good-looking face, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Ekon, could you could you share with us what your next plans are? What, what, what's the upcoming latest updates, etc.? Where where are you in the world, etc.? Oh man, you know, my, my really it's all about legacy building for me. You know, with the Akon Legacy Ventures, our goal is to bring in really impactful concepts, ideas, business ventures, and you know, tools that will allow people to live really good in all throughout, you know, emerging markets, you know, starting with Africa. And Akon City is one of those uh, pieces that I'm super, super excited about, you know, and obviously with the Acoin being the utility token for the, the city itself, but it's something I feel is going to be the, the spark and the, uh, you can say, proof of concept of futuristic cities built around the world. You know, with Africa, we're finally now in a position where the architecture will reflect the culture. And I think, you know, we are in a, we're in a great position. I, I'm loving how everything is coming in full, you know, fruition. A lot of hard work, obviously, is now called coming together and actually paying off. And we're actually pulling in the partners that we need to actually make it all come through. Excellent. Wow. Can, can I just add a couple pieces to that, CZ? Sure. Some of, of, some of the big things that we're excited about that are being pulled into the mix. Uh, we've aligned with um, something called Jeeve Network that's digitizing healthcare. It's first being done in Rwanda. It's going to digitize the healthcare for the entire country. Pretty unbelievable. Putting it on the blockchain. Uh, you can read about that in some of uh, the articles around our announcements of that. But the gentleman behind that, Sanjeev Kela, is a real visionary, and we've aligned with him. Big shots to Sanjeev. Uh, that's my man. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. We, uh, we're doing some really interesting things in the agriculture and ag tech space, particularly with the World Food Bank and Global Food Exchange. We're working right. on some really innovative things having to, to, again, do with ag tech storage finance around farming and agriculture. Many, many people in the continent of Africa make their living having something to do with agriculture or the products thereof. We are opening some uh, ACOIN effect opportunity hubs where people will get learning and education uh, opportunities along with uh, gig economy opportunities in AI and blockchain. Some of those, the first of those hubs will be open in Wale Medical and Technology City and there'll be a bunch of gig economy jobs in AI and, and blockchain driven things around med tech. Um, and uh, there, are, there are just all kinds of amazing new things. We're, we're also super excited about, uh, about community building through things like SenseChat with our partners, uh, the Pierces, uh, particularly Crystal Rose Pierce, who's uh, just an absolutely brilliant uh, leader and part of our, our team. And then we're always looking at things that can be amazing public-private partnerships, super aligned with the UN Blockchain Commission. Um, and, uh, and again, you, you know from whence we come as we have uh, friends in common, including the aforementioned Brock Pierce. Yeah, you know, he right. was part of your 
origin story CZ. So, uh, you know, he keeps us on our toes with some cool innovations and we luckily bring some to him as well. Cool, cool. Absolutely. So it sounds like you guys, you guys are doing a lot in Africa already. Um, and um, how, yeah. John, how do you find working with governments in Africa? Like based on my personal experience, I flew there, met a bunch of uh, senior officials in governments, uh, luckily met a couple of presidents. We found, I found that um, there are different levels of understanding. That was about 2008. <laughs> um, some, are, right. some get it and really want to welcome it. Some are really just, what, what is this? Um, why am I bothering? Right. Uh, what's your experience? So, so, do you see governments as a so hindering? The, yeah. No, no, not at all. So our, our look, I'm very fortunate. Akon uh, achieved a lot with Akon Lighting Africa so far. Uh, that's put in over 400 different installations of solar street lamps all across 18 different countries. Every single one done as a request for proposal. Everyone involved with governments, mainly national governments, sometimes, you know, state or local governments. But through that, people got a real sense of his love for Africa and the African people and wanting to improve people's quality of life. And so as a result, he's gotten huge support from both the average person and government leaders. And they've recognized that his, he's really drawn towards truly having a massive impact and improving, again, people's condition of life. So as a result, people understand the support um, that, that the governments need to give him and the governments really understand the connection that he has with, with their frankly, their electorate. So we, we are very fortunate in that we're often welcomed in uh, with, with wide open arms. Sometimes there's explanation. Everything's not the easiest thing, but a lot of goodwill has been generated. And, uh, you know, there's a real desire to, again, improve and create innovation and bring technology, help on the pathway to prosperity. And everybody knows that's what drives Akon and our entire team. So we're often met with with wide open welcoming arms. So I guess so I, we should, thanks, Akon. You got it. I guess we should have followed Akon around in Africa. When in 2018, when we were trying to introduce ourselves, some countries are like the crypto exchange. Well, what is it? What so is that? Just, right. <laughs> so Akon, I think it's great to have you to be the ambassador um, pushing this crypto adoption in Africa. I think it will make things a lot easier for us as well um, indirectly. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, Akon, so what are some of the lessons you learned working uh, in Africa? Like what, what works, what doesn't work? Can you, any critical factors you can share, et cetera, like things like that? Yeah, um, I, I think what doesn't work in Africa is speed. And I think a lot of companies come in and they're not really patient enough to understand the culture, the kind of terrain that they're working in. And adaptation is another big, you know, big, big, you know, thing to look for because ultimately what works in the U.S. or what works in Europe may not necessarily work in Africa. And I think a lot of times we come with these systems that's already set up turnkey, but only for the environment in which we come from. And we try to copy and paste it in a totally different environment that doesn't really adapt to that as easily. Um, but ultimately, I think the best thing is to really take time, understand Africa, understand the area in which you're trying to you know, you know, accomplish in, in, in whatever it is you try to accomplish. But more than anything, just pay more attention. You know, don't rush into anything and try to beat someone else to the punch. Just understand your market, understand what you're trying to adapt and achieve, and then utilize that information to really carefully go into the market. But I think, you know, I think we play a big role in a lot of that because we've kind of done it already. Uh, me being African, me born and raised and understanding the people and the culture and the government itself kind of will walk a lot of people through in a more easier, safer way. And Africa's really built on trust, you know, because for a long time they've been misled and, and been cheated. And, and so they they really careful about how and who to do business with. So we bring a lot of trust factor to it because everything that we've always brought, I've always uplifted a region in a, such a big way and created a lot of benefit. So it kind of helps to have the right relations walking in. Hmm. So um, Acoin, you, you also have an Acoin Foundation, right? Um, so what type of programs are you guys focused? Um, are you got trying to bring out from there? Oh, man. I can jump into that one. Yeah, okay. I mean, there's so many of them. Uh, I'll just start with you know, education is a huge one. Yep. Uh, financial yep. inclusion really important. Again, improving access to healthcare. Uh, we've got a whole initiative on land titles and making sure that people are protected on the, the land that they've been on for generations. Um, so there, there are just numerous ones. Again, things that we were talking about in the ag tech space, 
Uh, there's a lot of ways to help improve the productivity and also the, the value of the crops. There, there are a lot of different things. There's some stuff, again, natural resource related in mining. So there's all kinds of things across uh, the foundation, mainly about uh, improvement of people's um, condition of life, again, whether through healthcare, land titles, uh, maximizing the value of their efforts, whether in agriculture or mining or whatever their, their jobs are. But there are broad initiatives across many silos and we have a growing team in the foundation uh, and that's, that's a major focus for us. Mm. Right. So yeah, let's jump into the sort of current events a little bit. How has COVID-19 affected um, you guys or the project progress uh, and specifically in Africa? How has that uh, impacted in any positive or negative way, et cetera? Uh, well, it's been a blessing for me, I got to say, you know, <laughs> COVID allowed, you know, me to really sit and pay attention to a lot of things that was happening. It also allowed me to be able to catch up on a lot of great things that we were actually working on and kind of relieve some of the distractions with me moving all over the place, trying to get it all together. It actually allowed me to focus and really hone in on our older, you know, overall agenda to kind of fine tune everything else. It, it also allowed us to be able to close out very important partnerships that we felt that was necessary and allowed us also to be able to express that uh, partnership in, in, in a more detailed way and kind of close up all the, you know, uh, you could say, um, miss, miss, you know, understandings and communications, but it, it really collected all of our thoughts to really be able to focus and drive our agenda in a really, really good way. Um, as far as opportunities, you know, you, it's a lot easier to catch a target when it's sitting still. And I was one of those guys who was moving like a fast speed bullet. So, you know, it, it allowed a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for me to really pay full attention to and also, you know, sit with my team and kind of get things in order. I know John hasn't been this successful as get, keeping me in, in a place in meetings and things of this nature in, in a long time. So oh, like, yeah. so this, We've gotten so many things done in the last 90 days, CZ. It is unbelievable. Right. The one downside <laughs> for me is that um, a bunch of the folks that we need to actually be sitting in person with, both in, in Africa and in the Gulf states, uh, you know, we just haven't been able to move. So we'll have a right. nice uh, whistle-stop tour once we get through that. There are a bunch of our, our, our partners and some heads of state that we need to be sitting with. Uh, and some of our, our local and regional partners, again, in Africa and the Gulf states that we just need to spend some time with. So we'll get there eventually. But in the interim, the last 90 to 100 days, we've gotten so many things done and so efficiently. And our team has just really ramped up. Plus, they've had extra, um, a lot more uh, intersection as a group with, with ACON on some of uh, our bigger initiatives. So everybody is incredibly pumped up and uh, nobody's sleeping as we race towards some of the, the next big utilization cases and all of that. So, and not Absolutely. to mention some of the things that we will eventually figure out how to do with Helen and your, uh, your group at the Binance Foundation. We will align the foundation sooner than later. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, uh, we, uh, I think some of the things you said earlier really, um, really resonates with us. Uh, we are working very hard on pushing adoption, education, um, and also healthcare, uh, et cetera. So uh, I think our scale, to be honest, is much smaller. Um, in sort of pushing this area. And um, so I think uh, speaking with Akon, I mean, it's very obvious you guys are much more focused in terms of effort and um, the initiatives are uh, actually much more uh, established. So we'll definitely be appreciative if, if we can tag along, figure out some way to work together to push those fronts. And- uh, Oh no, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Um, and I mean, uh, so uh, speaking of the uh, COVID-19 uh, impact, right? So I, I saw last year, Akon, you still have some concerts going on. This year, obviously there's no, it's not possible to have right. yeah. uh, next, <laughs> next year after COVID is over, are you planning to, have, to do more concerts? Uh, what's the plan there? Oh yeah, you know, once COVID is over and they open up the countries, the, I mean, there's a huge tour that's on hold now. You know, I have a huge 32 city tour with the NFL that we've been trying to get off the ground. You know, it's more of a top stop the bullying and putting for emphasis on, you know, cyber bullying, actual bullying, internet bullying, things of this nature. We want to kind of really focus on that, but it's a, you know, real tour that actually launches the album itself. And then we have a world tour that will slowly go right behind that. And we are like, I'm so excited. Like you have no idea. I just, that, that's one of the, one, one of the things that bothers me and that, 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 that it's like, ah! I want to be able to go out and, and get back on that stage. So we're definitely looking forward to fulfilling all these tours after this is open for sure. 
Cool, cool. Um, uh, let me ambush you with a question. Is there any plans in the future to be able to accept a, a coin or other crypto for concert tickets, et cetera? Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the concert is, is one of the biggest utilizational tools that we have, you know, not only just for myself, but all the artists on my label and hopefully artists that we promote and market around the world, you know? So the whole idea is to be able to eventually utilize crypto for everything that we're doing. Excellent. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I got to be uh, careful with the time here, but let me ask you a, a few yeah. quick questions then. Um, so what's your, been to all this, you've been to all the cities in the world, right? What's your favorite city? Um, my favorite city is actually Malta. You know, oh, okay. I love, love Malta, man. I don't know what it is about that place, but I just love it. The combination between the desert and the water is like yeah. the perfect combination. Oh, cool, cool. So, so we're one place in common. <laughs> That's great. So uh, <laughs> going around the world again, like what's your favorite food? Like what kind of food do you like? Uh, pizza. Actually, pizza is one of my favorites, man. I can eat pizza anywhere. <laughs> uh, okay. And that's also a crypto food, right? <laughs> and right. Uh, my last question for you. <laughs> so uh, what's your favorite book? Uh, my favorite book will probably be, um, uh, I would probably say, it would probably be The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, 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 that's been one of my, like, I kind of, that's like the rule of life for me, the four agreements. If you haven't read it, you have to read it. It's going to uh, change the whole perspective of life, period. I, uh, I have read it. it it's, uh, I think the first chapter yeah. starts with some, with some boy um, traveling through the desert or something. Um, not right, sure. the storyline. Yeah. Yeah, the, the four agreements is, is I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing book. Cool, cool. Excellent. Um, and, and if, anything else you want to share with the audience? Um, any other topics? Oh, man, listen, just look forward to everything that we got coming. Um, log on to akon.com for all the futuristic stuff we got going on musically and beyond. Of course, um, acoin.io, uh, uh, which is the website for all things relating to acoin. Um, and then you got aconcity.com for all the things on that level as well. So between those three sites, I mean, you can link on to anything that we're doing and you get all the information on it. Great. So I, I think I think ju uh, just on behalf of the uh, sort of crypto space, um, um, I'm, we're very fortunate to have a big name like yourself entering this uh, area, and I think you will you will be you will be able to push adoption in a lot of areas that no one in our industry currently have not been able to. And I think the music industry and um, Africa um, are both really strong areas to uh, to be able to push adoption. So um, we're, we're definitely looking for more chances to talk to you. Uh, more privately, I guess, and then um, look for look forward to uh, doing things together. And thank you so much no, for coming. Absolutely. Our, yeah, thank no, you so thank much you for coming. You know? yeah. yeah, thank you Appreciate guys it. more. You know, for and happy third birthday, Binance. Yeah, you thank know? you so much. Yeah. Now we're three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, CZ. Great. All right, great thank work. you so much, guys. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you.